Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to this series on the ATEM Mini Extreme. And specifically in this one we're talking about Supersource. So what is it and how to get the most out of it? In a nutshell, Supersource is what Blackmagic Design called these complex layouts, usually used in maybe newscasts or these days in digital conferences. Until now, Supersource was only really available on the more high-end, more expensive ATEM line, but it's now in the ATEM Mini Extreme, and it'll let you show up to five sources at the same time. So, a background image, and then four cameras maybe on top of that. In order to get started with Supersource, just connect up a few sources to your ATEM Mini Extreme. In my case, I've connected up Source 1, 2, and 3 with these three fake presenters that I've made. And I've also added a couple of things to the media pool here. I can see an image, which is my background color, but you could put any image in here. And another one, which is a slide from a sort of fake presentation for reference throughout this video. I can bring Supersource on air pretty fast with a dedicated button right on the A10 Mini. So let's take a look at that. Off to the right hand side here, you can see that S Source button. I'll bring it on preview and then I'll cut to bring it on air. Here on the ATEM Mini Extreme program output, you can see the default super source layout that I had, which is three presenters and my presentation there to the bottom right. And just like anything else in my production, I can cut between my individual sources here. You can see that happening on the program out. And then I can jump in to the super source and show that to the viewers. So it's just like any other source that comes into your ATEM. Now it is possible that you don't like those default layouts, but you can customize and create your own in the ATEM software control. Over on the ATEM software control, I can configure exactly how I want the super source to look here in the super source section of the palettes. As mentioned before, you do get a few layouts that were pre-configured by Blackmagic Design, but below that, you're able to make a change to each box. So in the box control, I have access to each of the four boxes that I can bring on air, box one, two, three, and four. And as I enable and disable it, I can show you the final output of how that looks. It disappears and reappears. Below that, I can set the source for each of the boxes. So in this case, I've set box one to camera one, but in here, I can change that to something else. So for example, I could change that to media player two. And then over on the program output, you can see there I have the media player two has now taken over the top left corner. Maybe I can just change that back again to camera number one. And that works just fine. Then below that you have position, size, and cropping options. And this is where you'll really be able to customize exactly where on screen and how cropped the image is. To adjust any of these parameters, I can just use the little slider here over the name of the parameter. So if I just change the size there, you can see it happen in real time on the program output. I'll just set that back to normal. And then we can discuss a little bit how fiddly these options are. So when you're in there and you want to create this whole super source layout, it can get a little bit fiddly at times. That's why I've created a final image of what I want my super source to look like. I'm just gonna drag an image into my media pool of what I actually want the super source to look like in this case. So here it is, dragging it in and dropping it. And you can just about see there, it has a large image on the right, which is where the presentation will go. And then three small images on the left hand side where I want my three presenters to live. I'm gonna drag that into the media player one, head back over to switcher and super source, and I can take a look in this little art tab here. The art tab is where you'll set either the foreground or the background. Now previously I just had a red image as the background, but now I wanna set a foreground image instead. And that image I just dragged into the media pool, it actually has cutouts, it's a PNG. So it has cutouts of each of the places. And this can make it a lot easier to move things around and then hide any loose edges behind that cutout. So if I head back in again, I can make sure my media player one is still set up as the super source output. And if I just cut to that right now, you can see, well, things don't look great. I have my old layout there and then the image in the background. Back in the ATEM software control, I'll actually change my artwork to a foreground image, pop back in again and yeah, well, it's gotten better, but it doesn't look great. And this is when I need to start fiddling around a little bit more in the ATEM software control to get each of these four boxes in the place that I want them. So let's start with uh, presenter and box number one. Back in the ATEM software control, I can go into the presets, into box one, and then I'll make adjustments here in order to line that up. So I know first of all that the position X and Y needs to change. There it is in X. And then I can actually change the size as well, just to pull it down into position. 
the small little dials in the ATEM software control makes this uh, some work to do. I wouldn't want to have to do this live. It's definitely something you want to set up in advance and then jump in and make the changes. Now for the second box, I can actually go into the copy section and uh, make it a little bit easier on myself. In the ATEM software control, I can go to this copy tab and here I can see I can take some settings from box one and copy them over to box two and box three. So I'll do that, copy over, and then I'll head back into my super source layout and things do look different than they did earlier. And that's because my other boxes are now hidden behind that box one on the top left. But I can fix that in the ATEM software control, of course, by going into the presets, into number two, so all I need to do is adjust the Y position on box number two. And I'm just doing that now. And it falls into place somewhere around there. And then in box number three, I can do the same again. Taking a look at my program output to see where it lands. And in this case, box number three is actually my ATEM software control, but you can get the gist of that. Finally, heading back in one more time to the ATEM software control because I want to adjust box number four, which is the media player. And I know my size needs to be adjusted a little bit. So I'll do that. And my X and Y need to be adjusted too. And here's my final look with all three presenters roughly in the right place, giving their presentation with that over to the right. It looks really nice and something you definitely couldn't do on the previous ATEM mini models. Yes, I know what you're thinking. This whole thing took a lot longer than you would think, and it's very fiddly with all those little dials. And I was thinking that too, and that's why I created the Super Source Builder. And you can find a link to that below this video. You can hop over there and create layouts in a more, I would think, intuitive way, and then download the macros and bring those into your ATEM Mini Extreme. This project is pretty much in its early days, but I have more features planned on the way. So jump in there, give it a go and download some macros to see how well it works. And if you want to support the project, I've also made available a pack of all these sorts of layouts. So you can jump in there and grab those instead or start from those and build upon them. Give it a go. A nice way to enhance the super source is instead of using an image in the background or the foreground, you could use a looping animation instead. Now the ATEM Mini Extreme doesn't allow for that animation to be brought in via the media pool, but of course, with those eight HDMI inputs, you can add a looping animation out of maybe a Raspberry Pi or a computer you have nearby. I've connected another input to my ATEM Mini Extreme, and it's this looping image of some stars appearing throughout the presentation. That'll just run slowly and loop over time. As you might expect, I can go over to the Art tab here and choose the input that I attached it to, in my case, number three. Then I wanna place that in the background. And finally, over in my Presets tab, I'm able to bring the two images I want in front of that. I'll just choose this predefined layout here and then make sure my boxes are what I expect them to be. I want box one to be camera one and box two to be camera two. And now I'm showing you the super source final layout. I have my two sources on top and then I have my background animation playing. It's a little bit subtle and you can just see it happening there in the background. I've just thrown together this looping animation for the purposes of this video, but you can really use whatever you want or whatever you find online. Which brings us to the next level of super source, which is flying animations between two layouts, which is done by macros and some planning. But I don't think there's time in this video to discuss it. I'll get to that in a future video. So I do hope you find that useful on all things super source. There's loads more to discuss and let me know in the comments below if there's anything you think I really missed in this one. I'll be happy to make many more videos on the ATEM Mini Extreme and specifically on super source.